One of the biggest mysteries surrounding President John F. Kennedy's life was of course his assassination. But one less known fact about JFK's life was how he managed to remain alive with his various ailments. Perhaps for this, credit has to go to his doctor, who was perhaps questionable and unorthodox. JFK's doctor was Dr. Max Jacobson, also known as Dr. Feelgood. Let's look back at JFK's questionable doctor who barely kept him alive. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was born May 29, 1917. He was born just outside Boston and the son of Joseph Kennedy, a prominent entrepreneur, and Rose Kennedy, a prominent socialite and philanthropist. He was born into greatness and was destined for a great career. During his teens, he attended Choate, a prestigious boarding school for the sons of gentlemen. Here, he began feeling ill, and at first, doctors suspected he had leukemia. It was later found out to be an inflammation of his colon. While this wasn't a major setback, it showed that young Jack would have to find a way to deal with health problems while battling the stresses of life. He served in the U.S. Naval Reserve after finishing school and eventually became a junior grade lieutenant. He eventually received the Navy and Marine Corps Medal as well as a Purple Heart. He began his political career in the late 1940s. He started in the House of Representatives and then served in the U.S. Senate from 1953 to 60. As a politician, he gained a reputation for being a servant of the people who cared about his country and the liberties America offered. He later became a symbol for freedom in America and wanted to fight against the growth of communism and to improve race relations. However, one notable aspect of his Senate career was that he was often absent due to frequent illnesses. As he became a more prominent politician, his health issues became a concern to the public. On January 2, 1960, JFK announced his candidacy for president. While he already had extensive political experience, there was skepticism towards his young age and even his Catholicism. But he won over Americans with his enthusiasm, his eloquence, and love for country. His commitment to the separation of church and state and other American ideals made him seem like the ideal American. While he was one of the youngest presidents at the time, only 43, JFK did have a few health problems. He felt an overwhelming stress during his campaign, and the toll of his presidential duties exhausted him. It was at this time he realized he needed a doctor by his side to help him. Before we tell you about Dr. Feelgood, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Dr. Feelgood Max Jacobson was born in 1900 in the then German Empire. Little is known about his childhood and early life, or what his family background was. He studied at the Friedrich Wilhelm University of Berlin, now known as Humboldt University of Berlin. In 1936, he fled Germany as Hitler and the Nazis were coming to power. He moved to the U.S. and set up a medical practice in Manhattan. It wasn't long until the good doctor became reputed for his medical talents. Since his practice was on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, he attracted a wealthier crowd. It wasn't long until he got celebrity clients. His famous clients included Lauren Bacall, Ingrid Bergman, Marlene Dietrich, Eddie Fisher, Elizabeth Taylor, Billy Wilder, Elvis Presley, Marilyn Monroe, Zero Mostel, Rosemary Clooney, Montgomery Clift, and Thelonious Monk. It wasn't long until he started working with his most famous client, President John F. Kennedy. Becoming JFK's doctor catapulted Dr. Jacobs into stardom, and soon enough he got the nickname Dr. Feelgood. He certainly got a lot of respect for becoming the doctor of the sitting president. The President and the Doctor in May of 1961, Dr. Feelgood met with JFK. The president was feeling stress and needed a medical expert on his side. JFK asked Dr. Jacobson to travel with him to Vienna. While there, he would meet with Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev, their first meeting together. JFK needed medicine to help him deal with his stress, and he needed Dr. Jacobson to inject him with the dose. He was happy to accept the offer. Yet the relationship between Dr. Jacobson and JFK would go down in history as one of the strangest between a politician and an assistant. Sadly, Dr. Jacobson's reputation as the admirable immigrant would soon be tainted. Before we move on, let's take a look at the context in which this relationship flourished. It was the height of the Cold War. Tensions between the West and Soviet Union were at an all-time high. The U.S. was especially concerned about nearby Cuba's relationship with the Soviet Union. As a result, the American president was expected to keep the peace between these superpowers. The pressure on JFK couldn't have been higher. His health problems would continue to flare up, and it was necessary he was always taken care of, and always on top of his game. It was only natural JFK would choose one of the country's most famous doctors to tend to him. Yet soon enough, controversy surrounded their relationship. 
The moniker Dr. Feelgood was considered strange, and the fact that Dr. Jacobson embraced this absurd moniker drew much criticism. It was later revealed that Dr. Feelgood was giving JFK mind-altering injections that were intended to make him feel better. This would be controversial regardless of the patient, but to give such a medicine to a sitting U.S. president while he's en route to meet the leader of a rival Soviet Union is an example of truth being stranger than fiction. The story wasn't revealed until 1979, almost two decades after JFK had been assassinated. There were government documents that revealed the information, and Dr. Jacobson even mentioned it in his own memoirs. Part of the treatment which Dr. Jacobson administered included steroids and amphetamines. He made over 30 visits to the White House to treat JFK. Soon enough, the medical staff banned him from visiting the president. They intervened because they felt Dr. Jacobson's treatments were harming the president. The Food and Drug Administration also warned JFK about the contents of the various treatments he was receiving. Yet, JFK balked at these remarks and once stated he didn't care what the injections included. According to him, they worked to help him remain healthy. It wasn't just JFK who received these doses. Dr. Jacobson himself began taking amphetamines. Due to his relationship with JFK, he began working longer hours and had increased his list of celebrity clients. His behavior became erratic and his public persona was getting tarnished due to his behavior. He was under suspicion for the amount of amphetamines he would buy and administer to his patients. Eventually, the Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs intervened and confiscated his supply of amphetamines. On April 25, 1975, Dr. Feelgood was no longer in business as his medical license had been revoked. JFK was assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald on November 22, 1963. This assassination remains the major discussion point about JFK's life, and for many Americans, his bizarre relationship with Dr. Feelgood has taken a back seat. Jacobson died December 1, 1979 in New York City. His cause of death was not revealed, and he's largely faded away from public discussion. Now it's time to hear from you. What was the most surprising about this story? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.